Since 1968 there has been a very strong link with the people of Belfast and the people of Northern Ireland with a theatre on this particular site. And if you know Belfast um, well at all, you'll be aware that this is actually one of the most attractive areas of the city. The, the location beside the river is stunning. Um, and you know, from outside and from inside the theatre, you can see those, those vistas and see how that impacts on the, the building and the people who use the building. Well, our first thought was because the, cause it's a producing theatre, not a receiving theatre, and because everybody involved in it, even the person who sells tickets at the box office, says, I work in theatre. So we thought, Maybe then it's a family, and so we adopted this motto for our competition entry. We call it a house for lyric. I mean, a theatre is a house, front of house, back of house, house full, you know. But we wanted it to feel like a family house. And to do that, we decided to, as much as we could, break down the barrier between front of house and back of house and make one kind of interlocking system out of it. I think he's always playing with the tailoring of space and trying to open it and close it in its dimensions so that people are feeling like they're in on a discovery. John sees each of these points in the building like stages in themselves and congregation points. And also the same as with tailoring is happening in section as well because you know the, the heights of the spaces you know you're kind of compressed at the entrance and then it's released the second phase and then there's a further you know void through the building obviously to let as much natural light into the the social spaces the in-between spaces of the of the um of the building so obviously the the kind of the flow the social space between is is you know the, the, where we can use light and create more drama the old building was you know we had definitely reached the end of its life so this is it's just a, a joy to come into work every day and uh, uh, and as I say, when we welcome all new artists, they just come round the place and go, my goodness, I can't believe this is a, this theatre is for us and for us to use. And you know, we've had people like Ken Browner and Simon Callow saying it's the best new theatre that they've ever seen. And actors are very good. They're nervous creatures, but they're very good communicators. And I think they had the idea, you see, that the theatre is the place and everything else is not the theatre. And we were trying to say to them, not only the auditorium, but every little pocket in the building is part of the theatre. So we made the stairs, or we made a landing, or we made a quarter landing, or we made a seat on a landing, or we made a window that looks at a tree or something, or a window from a rehearsal room that looks into the foyer. And it turns out that actors really like those retreat places because they can go away and read their lines, or they can go away and cry. Or, um, so I think we're communicating with them through the way we're making the space, and they appreciate that. Again, that was one of the very important mm. things for us, that we had a <coughs> flexibility within not only the auditorium, on the stage but also within the building and you know, one of the things that I was very keen on when I arrived in the project was that a lot of the rooms that we had were not identified as a, a room for a particular function but a room as a flexible space so that it could serve as a meeting room or it could serve as an additioning room or it could serve as a, an office space whatever we actually needed to and when we get inside you'll actually see how we use those different spaces. But most buildings are organised by their circulation and by their masses and by their volumes and actually so is this building quite simply set out like that to do with the site topography. But in the middle of it there's this auditorium which is actually another world. It's an instrument, it's a piece of equipment, it's a space containing utensil, but it's also an operating space, you know, an acoustic space, a, a social focus space. So I, I, I would say that the discovery journey for us in this project has been the development of the auditorium. Completely uh, feeling in the dark, you know, learning from first principles, but with a thought that we wanted this auditorium to have. I, I'm creasing my hands like this because we wanted the auditorium to bring the body of the audience together. The auditorium has got an acoustic expert, a theatre design expert, a seating expert, a lighting expert, the actors, the directors, the man who has to sell the seats, you know, everyone's an expert in the auditorium. But their various demands conflict with each other. And interestingly, you have to resolve them into a form which looks like it's a room. Um, very, very interesting process. But the brief of the studio theatre was a black box with no windows. So we, we wanted to challenge both of those concepts. So we built a brick box, like a warehouse, like a found space. And then we put a window in because the street's outside and the street is part of the theatre, you know. An architect is always thinking about the architecture of the city and the city as theatre and moments of theatre in the city. So we have a silent rehearsal room. Um, part of the brief was, well, they wanted a room with no windows, but I think what they really meant was silence. 
So we took silence as the brief and then we put in windows, windows into the treetops, windows to the sky. So you feel sheltered in that room. You feel away from the world in that room. And that's what they need for rehearsal. When they're on stage, they want you know, razzmatazz, but when they're in rehearsal, they want retreat. So I think for an architect to find a job where he's working in a culture that needs a public realm constructed, and if the brief is a theater, then you, know, you better seize that chance when you get it. So we just gave it total concentration.